I'm the Scale Model Geek, and in this video, I'm building a communication station out of these teeny weeny little shipping containers. 172nd to be exact. Now, I've 3D printed these little units up on my, well, 3D printer. Now, I originally downloaded these 3D files from a website called Thingiverse. There were a few modifications I need to do because they were very plain and simple shipping containers. And so I added, added some sliding doors, some opening doors on the front as well. And uh, that just gave me a few options. So when I do print them, I had a number of different types of shipping containers I can actually use in my build. Once I had completed my variation on the shipping container, I then saved them as an STL file and exported into my 3D printing software. These are 20 foot containers, and I also modify the files to create 40 foot shipping containers. When I printed them, the shipping containers were placed flat on the uh, build plate. That way I really didn't need to do uh, any supports other than in the door arches. I also printed the roofs of the containers flat on the build plate. And then uh, the way it was designed, they would then slide in uh, from one end and glued into place once I was happy with it. There was a small amount of filing that I needed to do just to make sure that roof sl is slid in quite well. And part of the diorama, I wanted to have a satellite dish, but th that took quite a bit of searching before I actually found one that I really liked. It was originally done as a, a science project for some dude on uh, Thingiverse once again. And it originally was created in 1/30th scale. So it was quite a large size uh, satellite dish. I loved it because it had so much detail. And because it was a working model, there was a lot of parts in this unit. And because I needed the finished product to be in 172nd scale, it made a lot more sense for me to combine some of the parts together into one major printing piece. You can see as I click through the pieces how many there were and in 172nd scale it just wasn't necessary to print most of those pieces separately. So I ended up combining all those pieces into four major structures. So I ended up with the um, tower, the platform, the satellite dish and the ladder. Now, once I printed them and converted the sizes down, they come up great, but I did have some minor issues. Things like the railing on the platform, the handrails were just way too thin and fragile, including this uh, ladder. You can see how brittle that is. Well, not brittle, but very thin and flexible. So I had to go back into Blender and uh, resize some of those structures just to give them a bit more reinforcement. I was very concerned that sometime during the build that I would break them off. So fix up the ladder, the handrails, and also the rings around the satellite dish. And those adjustments made a huge difference to the final printout. And you can see far more sturdier and still fairly in scale. And with that portion of the printing done, it was time to start putting the satellite dishes and um, containers together. Start giving everything a bit of a surface prime I then gave everything a nice even coat of the undercoat. All primer. Same stuff. Now to add a bit of strength to the satellite dish and the platform, I did drill a hole through the side and added an aluminium tube and just concealed it with some greeblies there. I then gave all the parts a base coat of this Insignia White from Vallejo and a fairly nice even coat. And once all the paint had dried, I then put together everything with some super glue. And that's our finished unit. Well, not quite finished because it needs a whole bunch of weathering. My first wash was this dark brown. And a bit of a spritz of water just to make sure the wash flows nice and evenly and doesn't create those little water marks on the unit. Yeah, I know, it looks really heavy, but it does uh, fade quite a fair bit once it dries. Don't panic. And around the big bolts, I use a bit of black wash. See, it's all faded, it looks good. Didn't come out too heavy. It's looking good, it's starting to feel a bit weathered now. 
I'm going to add some rust streaks. So I'm using some of these weathering pencils from AK. Now a combination of a bit of water on another brush and um, I just kind of streak it down and using a, a damp brush, I dent in it out a bit. So it kind of fades. I really like this effect. I like those pencils very much, though I don't actually use them like a pencil. I just put a bit of water on the tip of the pencils and then brush it on. Like I mentioned earlier, a bit of filing for the container roofs and they just slid in quite nicely. Not too much force. They're my 40 foot containers and I'm just working out an orientation right now just to give me a rough idea how many of these containers I need and this took a bit of playing around but we finally got it. Problem is because of the containers being so flexible there are so many different variations. The only one that I was specifically knew where it needed to be was that upright 40 foot container. I knew I had to have a long vertical one. And once I was happy where they were going to go, I took a photo of it just so I get a good reminder of where they're going to be. I did need to do some minor grinding to the bottoms of those containers just so they can lock into place a lot easier. Like that. And as you can see, a bit of super glue to start holding all the containers together. And there's our final result. Very happy with it, but I kind of did jump the gun. In retrospect, I should not have assembled it right now. But because I was so excited to see what it looked like, I kind of you know, went too far ahead. I should have painted all the containers individually, then put it together. So I end up having to do a whole bit of masking and then painting the containers in the various colours that I need. It wasn't hard, just time consuming, that's all. In future, I think I'll need to curtail my excitement. So I won't jump too far ahead. My first lot of containers were painted with this German red brown. It was just a nice even coat over the four containers that I had exposed. And surprisingly, the masking was really crisp, so that turned out quite well. Next colour was some of this dark Prussian blue from Vallejo. And for the rest of the containers, some of this light green. And there's the final result. Quite happy with that, but I kind of think in retrospect, the blue is probably a bit too dark. I printed up some custom decals. Now, I did run into a bit of a problem with these. I printed these on my laser printer, but the way the printer works, it makes the decals look translucent, even though they look great on the paper. Once you water slide them off onto the container, it kind of loses a lot there. And like I said, because they're translucent, a lot of the underlying color comes through. So I was a bit disappointed with the final result of these, but hopefully when I weather them, they won't look so bad. So I kind of may need to go to maybe an um, inkjet printer, I don't know. But I end up going to uh, my stash of old deco uh, papers from previous builds and just found a whole bunch of numbers. Some of this steel for the handles on the doors of the shipping containers. I thought these would be the death of me. These were so fine to print and uh, yeah, kind of doing my head in, but I got through it. If you haven't already, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel and hit notifications. Your support has been wonderful and I appreciate it very, very much. And just before I start weathering, I came up with the idea of just adding some painted over areas, you know, like previous graffiti and they've tried to get rid of it with unmatching colors even though i created myself a bit of extra work that i didn't need to very happy with the way this is turning out next step i need to make some platforms using my brand new laser cutter engraver first things first i need to create the templates for the platforms now using the software that's provided which is lightburn i just created these um, outlines of the areas that i need to cut and I just simply measured up the areas that I needed and transferred them onto the workflow. And then using the rectangle tool, I created these outlines of the areas that I need to cut out. Now the way to set up the cutting is the black lines will be cut through, so the laser strength will be set at 100%, and the speed will be 700 millimeters per minute. This should give me a nice crisp finish to the cutout. 
Now, these blue lines are my floorboards, the panels. So I need to engrave them rather than cut them out. So I need to adjust the strength of the laser. And in this case, I'll be setting it to only 24% and the speed will be 800 millimeters per minute. That way I get a nice little panel line like engraved rather than cut through. Now, because uh, CO1, the blue, the engraving is at the top, that will do that section first, the engraving section. It will then move on to the second one, which is the cutting out, and do that last. So it'll engrave, cut it out, and it'll pop out. With that all done, I then saved it to a memory card and headed over to my super duper whiz bang Creality Falcon 2. Now I did a review of this a few months ago and I was so happy with this new addition to my workflow. And this is the first time I actually get to use it in a build. So I'm excited. I'm about to cut the platforms out of some base wood and that gets very smoky using a laser cutter. And the laser's got this awesome air pump which pushes the smoke away from the laser lens. So it keeps it clean. So it's just a matter of putting the memory card into the side of the machine, switching on the unit to do its thing. And once it starts going, you do need to frame it up. So you use these four buttons just to make sure you square up the laser. And once you're happy with the way it's all set up and making sure it's on the base wood and you're not going to engrave anything other than the base wood, you can head over and press the play button and off she goes. Now you may notice I do have some gaffer tape around the base wood. That's because the boards that I ordered had a slight warp in them. So I had to tape them down to get them all flat. This particular unit from Creality is a 22 watt diode and it does 254 dpi which is a pretty precise little unit now the engraving speed is about 25,000 millimeters per minute very quick little printer and like i showed you earlier that air pump is a real um, game changer and you can see by the amount of smoke that's turning up that air pump just blows the smoke away from the laser lens keeping it clean and maintenance free almost and it's quite a compact little unit so when i'm not using it I just stand it up upright and put it aside next to my bench and it's out of my way. And they're my final cutouts. And you can see they've come out extremely well. I kind of, yeah, didn't quite design them uh, right in the fact that they're very, very long floorboards. I should have broken up the length of those floorboards. And these letters I'm using for some signage. Base coat for the platforms is some of this light grey. Now. Because it's designed for the airbrush, it's pretty thin and soaks in really nicely. So you don't get a very solid gray. And for the lettering, some of this flat yellow. This time I used Tamiya. And a nice even coat of the yellow. Now I did take a couple coats on the side because the sides were black. Then a bit of super glue to hold them into place. Now they are probably a slightly a bit too thick for the scale, but that's kind of the thinnest I was able to get at the time. For the platforms, a couple of dollars of super glue on the corners, and they just plop straight on. The majority of platforms just fitted nicely. Full transparency, this particular piece, I did have to do a bit of trimming, kind of screwed up my measurements a bit. It's only a couple mil. With all the platforms glued into place, it's time to start adding a whole bunch of details. This is a little air conditioner or two that I printed up and then gave it a coat of some off-white. Painted the little hoses in black. And on the bottom was a little module, I painted that in silver. Then I used a combination of this light gray and white, and I created a very thin wash to go over the whole structure. I then gave the containers a spritz of water once again, just to make the paint flow a lot easier. I figured I should do the wash now before I put on the hand railing, just in case I got a bit fumbly and broke some of the hand railing off. Because that stuff's pretty fragile once you see it. And that's it. Now these uh, pieces of hand railing I designed in Blender and they were so easy to create. All they were were just cylinders and square boxes, stretched, resized, and I was able to create that hand railing. And I printed off a whole bunch of them. So if I did snap them, I had heaps and heaps of spares. I also printed up a whole bunch of extra ladders from the satellite dish and I'll use these so people can access the different uh, platforms. 
and the old super glue popped out once again and it was just a matter of sizing and trimming this section was a bit fiddly and time consuming but well worth the effort it was just a nice detail that I added to it really happy with it and the joints I just hit it with some flat black and to add a bit more weathering I'm using some of this iron oxide in sepia wash now I didn't want to do too much rusting on these containers after all it is a functioning communication station and there will be some degree of maintenance on the station then the whole structure got a nice wash of the dark rust including the platform and to that I also added a bit of a thin black wash for the ladders I did trim off some of those safety barriers and also the length of the ladder and super glued it into place and there it is almost there still got a few more details to add but it's looking great here I've attacked my Greeblies box and I'm just finding some bits and pieces to create some antennas and some sensors to go on top of the towers that I have on top of the communication station and they're just some random bits that kind of make it look like they do something they were then super glued into place and a bit of weathering added to them as well with all the basic structures uh, completed it was time to make the whole thing a bit more homey I printed up a whole bunch of couches, chairs, tables, some generators and also some compressors you know, things that I thought that might be floating around a communication station and one of the containers will be an office so I printed up an office chair and desk and there they are all painted like I said there's my little office chair how cute is that And then some more super glue gets a bit of a run once again and just place the furniture basically where i would think that you know people would gather together nice little spots on the platforms once they were all glued into place it was onto the base so i'm using some of this xps foam and off camera gave it a bit of a brown and green uh, undercoat and I'm just working out where to place the structure this did take a bit of time because that satellite dish is a bit of an awkward thing to try and place somewhere uh, so quite a few variations later I did end up with a kind of you know kind of placement I was about 90% happy but you know, I did the best I could do in that area and once I was happy where it was well 90% happy I then marked out an area to uh, start gluing a bit of PVA glue, hobby glue, wood glue and a nice even coat on the XPS foam because uh, we're going to put some gravel there and once I had spread out the PVA glue with this brush I then used a bit of ballast now this is HO scale ballast I think it's ballast or it could be N scale ballast I don't know but it's it looks great as gravel <laughs> so that's what I'm using it for and once I spread it all out I did push it down with my hand to make sure I got a nice solid um, adhesion and then onto the other areas which I'm using some static grass and I'm using some two millimeter uh, lens now it, this kind of was a bit too uniform when I put it on and had a good look at it so I did need to um, change it up a bit and the way I did that I used a bit of paint here uh, some variations of the green I then just gave it a mottled finish and I'm just assuming this was like an old park an old you know um, radar station that had maintenance and it had a lawn and it was slightly grown over so it's kind of 50 50 you know messy 50 50 trimmed and then I dry brush with that ammo medium green and hit the highlights of the grass now for the gravel using some of this dark brown wash and thinned out quite a fair bit and then I also went in with some of this black also very thin down lots of water lots of spritzing to glue down the structure on top of that XPS foam I'm using some of this five minute epoxy glue it's aerodite 
I then used some of this coarse turf and some green foam there just to give it you know some small hedges and bushes around the structure just so it doesn't look so plain with just the grass and to hold it into place I'm using a combination of this white glue PVA glue some water and a few drops of um, dishwashing liquid to break the tension of the water so when you dab it on there it just flows through the foam and you can see how easily it just pops through when it dries it dries clear this is the platform for the satellite dish and this was also part of my laser engraving and cutter couple park benches that I'd printed up painted grey and gave them a bit of a wash same way I did the floorboards same technique off camera I had found these stairs on uh, Thingiverse painted them yellow and gave them a bit of a wash of brown and uh, black I have this rule that when I build structures or mechanical things you know things that are out of the norm I like to put some figures in there just to give it scale so when you look at the diorama, diorama, you can associate with the size of it. Also, when I print, I like to print multiples just to save time at a later stage. They don't use much resin, so it's worth the trouble. To start off my painting process, I first give the figures a coat of black primer, and then using this Liquitex uh, Titanium White, I then spray from one direction, and this creates zenithal lighting. This is what gives me the highlights and the shadows. So when I go to paint the figures with the base colors, it gives me all my contrast straight away. Really quick and cool technique to use. Next step, I block in the base colors. And I'm just picking some random colors that I would think, you know, would suit clothing, I guess. Yellow t-shirts, you know, khaki pants, white t-shirts, that type of thing. And there you have it, you can see how well the zenithal lighting worked. Not too shabby. And to place all dudes and the dudettes into their positions, some more super glue. I kind of placed them so, you know, they'll be having some conversations between themselves. You know, subjects like how the world went to poo. And it's right here that I thought I had finished and I just realized you know what I've actually forgotten something a pretty integral part of the build that I wanted to add and it was some piping and I'd already printed up and it was sitting there I just totally forgot to add it so this is a modular system that I'd printed up in well I kind of sized it to 170 second scale I guess and with this I can basically make up a whole bunch of different angles now, the piping system can go anywhere, in ground, into walls, across terrain, that type of thing. It's really cool. And once I had worked out the orientation of the piping, I then gave it a base coat of um, yellow, and then added some black and brown wash. And look at that, super glue once again to hold everything into place. Other than the platforms and the sensors uh, that were made out of gre greeblies, this whole thing has been 3D printed. Oh yeah, the base wasn't. <laughs> a bit more foliage around the piping and I'm really happy with the way this turned out. One of the biggest things I've taken from this build is I really need to spend more time on my construction process to save a bit of time. You know what, stick around because I've got an announcement straight after the hero images and talking about them, let's go check them out. This structure not only serves as a communication station, but also has become a community center. In a world that's post-apocalyptic, communications have been lost. Internet isn't available. The postman doesn't even exist anymore. This station is part of a small network of stations. They keep in contact with each other to make sure everyone's informed of what's happening in their country. Sadly, the ruling class had taken over these stations and started to filter and censor what information was to be transferred. These officials took it upon themselves to decide what information you could listen to, when you could listen to it, and they filtered out what they deemed as misinformation. The survivors were unaware that the information was being censored and manipulated. The survivors trusted the officials they were unaware if they were being told the truth or were being told lies. 
Thanks for sticking around to the end. And I want to thank you so much because over the last month or so, since I did my last video and uh, to this one, I have hit over 10,000 subscribers. I can't thank you enough for your support. I am so humbled that, that there's over 10,000 of you that actually want to see my work. I am so grateful that you want to watch my journey as I learn new techniques, as I create new builds, and I create my world. Thank you once again. And while you're waiting for my next video, go check out this build from the archive, where I build a custom Batmobile.